immersed in New Jersey culture and history. And um, three Rutgers books that are up there are really more about that than anything else. And in that process, I began to learn a lot about people that have great passion for history and they are pushing the rock up the, up the hill, you know, uh, nobody cares. And so this idea, and I actually met a guy who was a, a blacksmith of Waterloo Village, and I started to think about that, that, that contrast between the, you know, the historic reenactor and the athlete, you know, they're, they're on opposite ends of the, of the pop culture spectrum. And in the book, you know, there's these uh, sort of allegorical things where the blacksmith, uh, the main character, he's always working in the dark. He's working, you know, um, in this small place and very few people visit. And the ball player, he's always in the light, you know, he's under the lights. He's constantly under the lights, under the microscope of society. And one of the interesting things about the blacksmith and the athlete, um, too, is that um, is that the blacksmith, you know, up until say the 1860s and 70s, you know, the, the, the masculine ideal was either the soldier or the blacksmith. You know, the blacksmith was the guy who made the weapons. And the blacksmith was the guy that the kids would run down to the smithy and watch him bend his metal and shoe the horses and you know, work with his hands in the fire. And so, he gets usurped in like the 1860s and 70s by the ball players and the athletes and 1869 is the first year the college football game is played. It's the first year that the Cincinnati Red Stockings are formed. And, you know, and so there's that kind of uh, interesting aspect of the shift of what masculinity meant. The book is a very decidedly masculine book. And, uh, when my agent decided to represent it, he said to me, uh, this is gonna be a really tough sell. Men don't read books. And nobody, <laughs> and nobody wants to read about a couple of disillusioned middle-aged white guys. And I said, that's because you guys don't put anything out for us. <laughs> <laughs> and um, a year later, Donald Trump got elected, and I said, do I say? I told you, you know, they're out there. We're out there. Um, and so, um, well, he doesn't read books. <laughs> he doesn't read books. But the idea was that, you know, um, as my goal as a writer is sort of to try to bring men back to, you know, the type of a, a, a literary fiction that's not spies and historical novels and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's a very, um, a very masculine book, but a book with a lot of uh, male, uh, male emotion male alienation and, and, uh, and, and fear. Um, the blacksmith is in a marriage with a woman uh, who, um, you know, he's trying to pull his teenage son back into their more authentic culture, get him to understand about their rural roots in, uh, in upstate New York. The kid is off into the sports and entertainment world. He's at odds with his wife over that. and. Um, uh, my editor said to me, the opening scene uh, where the blacksmith is really introduced as a character uh, is the best scene of ma marital discord he's ever read. And I said, of course, I've experienced that. You know, so, uh, <laughs> you know, um, as I think many of us do. Um, 